Hi everyone, Adam here. Welcome back. Congratulations because this is the last video in the scoring series of the Ultimate Athlete Monitoring Toolkit. And it's a simple one, much more simple than anything we've done so far. What we're doing in this video is we're going to create category scores. The purpose of this, for me at least, is to develop an overall score and categories that represent constructs that are important to me, which might be power, speed, strength, and fitness. And that gives me an overview of an athlete before digging into the details. So I can look at an overall score, see, okay, are they decent or are they not? And then within that or overall score, what phys physiological or physical constructs do they struggle with? And then I can kind of go down the rabbit hole where I need to instead of just having all of the metrics presented to me at once. Now to develop category scores, all we have to do is create an average of the scores for our metrics that we care about. For example, for a power score for me, let me look through my metrics here. We have a CMJ average and we have a broad jump. Those two things fit in the power category for me, so I'm going to create a power score out of those two metrics. We'll go equals, average, open parenthesis, and we'll just select the two metrics that we care about. CMJ average score, or AE2, comma, and the broad jump score, AF2. And close the parenthesis and click enter. And now we have a power score, or a score that considers both of those metrics in its value. Now if you wanted to take this down a different route, and you wanted to weight those metric scores differently, for example, let's say, oh yeah, counter movement jump and broad jump, I both want them in my power score, but I want broad jump to be worth 80% and counter movement jump to be worth 20%. Well, to do that, what we can do is, I'm going to go right next door, we we'll go equals, open parenthesis, we'll select the counter movement jump average score, multiplied by whatever percentage you want as a decimal. So let's say we want it to be 20%, we'll multiply that score by 0.2, close the parenthesis, and plus or add, open parenthesis, the broad jump score, or AF2, multiplied by 0.8 or 80%, and close the parenthesis, and click enter. And now, we have a different power score, because we're weighting the broad jump 80%, and the counter movement jump 20%, whereas with our first one, they're weighted 50-50. That's how you can weight your scores, and there are more complex ways to do this that have additional considerations that may be important, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. One of the issues that you might run into if you do these weighted scores and you don't take uh, precautions that would be necessary uh, in these cases is that if you, uh, let's say that you don't have a CMJ average score, you don't have a broad jump score. All right, I'm going to remove this value and we'll see what happens. Now our speed score is five. Or sorry, now our power score is five when we have the weightings. The reason for this is because we're weighting the counter movement jump 20%, so we're taking 20% of the counter movement jump and adding to that 80% of the broad jump score. Now the broad jump score is gone, so that's essentially a big old zero, and all we're left with is 20% of the counter movement jump score. Whereas with our first calculation, we're going 50-50 but at the same time, this equation considers when there is no value. So if this, in the average equation, if we're missing a value, it will just take the one value that exists, which is the CMJ average score. Ideally, this score is the same. Uh, the weighted score is the same because there is no broad jump value. But that's not how this works. So if you anticipate not having some of your values sometimes, your scores, if you weight them like this, in this way, they might look artificially low, or they will be artificially low um, when data is missing. Whereas with just the average, using the average calculation, 
it'll all be fine. If, if a metric is missing, it'll just redistribute um, the weightings evenly across however many metrics you have. One important consideration that I want to go over here, I'm going to remove this score for now, and or actually I'm going to undo a couple things so the score goes back and we'll un remove that one. A consideration, or many considerations, are I'm building this with my own stuff, with my own scoring system, right? I have four categories. I decided I wanted a power, speed, strength, and fitness category. You may have five, you may have ten, you might have two. And I'm deciding which metrics go into these categories. And you're going to have your own metrics and make your own decisions about, hey, I want you know fitness to be a category and I want to include these metrics in it. So don't do exactly what I'm doing. Use your own data and your own intuition about what you're collecting to create the scores that you want. I'm going to go through the rest of mine. So for the speed score now, actually before I move on to the next score, one thing that we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to add an if error statement before the average. So we'll go if error, open parenthesis. If there's an error with anything going on in here, what do we want Google Sheets to do in this cell? Comma. Well, if there's an error, then we want it to be quote, quote, or blank, and close the parenthesis and click enter. I'm going to do that for all my scores uh, in case someone doesn't have data. Then if someone doesn't have data, we'll get an error otherwise. And now we'll move on to the speed score. Go equals uh, average, open parenthesis, and we can pick the two scores that we want, or however many scores we want. I'll pick the 10 meter sprint score, comma, and the 20 meter sprint score. One thing to note here is if you have a lot of scores in a row that you want to add together, you don't have to use a comma here. What you can do is you can just drag across them, and or use a colon, and it's the same thing. The only potential issue with this is that uh, if you add in a column in between, so let's just do this with a colon. We're looking from AG2 to AH2 and click enter. If we add in a column here, and this is not speed related, we'll call this uh, um, cardio, cardio score, which is like a fitness thing, and we give this person a, a 1,000 or 10,000 cardio score. That's going to be included in the speed score because we used a colon to denote the range that we wanted and we added a column in between. So that's one thing to consider. Whereas if you have a comma, that won't happen. So let's undo these things. Did I do that average? All right, so I have the average. I'm going to change this colon to a comma. So we want AG2 and AH2 to create the speed score. And we'll say if error. If there's an error with this average, comma, we'll make it quote, quote, or blank, close the parenthesis and click enter. And we'll do the same thing for strength. So go equals average, open parenthesis. Now what do I want to go in here? For me, I'm going to use the, the trap bar deadlift relative strength, comma, the trap bar deadlift 1RM, comma, the bench press 1RM, comma, and the bench press, bench press relative strength and close the parenthesis, and then we'll say, if error, open parenthesis, if there's an error with anything going on in here, comma, we'll make it quote, quote, and close the parenthesis. And the reason why I'm including all four of these is to show you something else with the overall score. I know it's a little bit repetitive, right? We have the general strength and the relative strength. Maybe you don't want both of those in the same score uh, because they'll be generally be highly correlated with one another and you're just being redundant uh, with with the numbers and pretty much giving uh, extra credence uh, to someone or lesser credence to someone based on uh, the same test, more or less. But now let's move on to the fitness score. We'll go equals average, open parenthesis, and what are my fitness metrics? I'll do body fat, comma, and VO2 max. Close the parenthesis. And we'll go if error, if error, open parenthesis, if there's an error with anything going on in here, comma, we'll make it quote, quote, or blank, and close it off, and click enter. And now we have all of our scores. I know I kind of flew through that, but it's relatively simple, and you can always pause the video. It's, it's very straightforward. Copy all of our formulas for our scores, paste them to the bottom of our sheet, and there we go. We have 
uh, category scores for every person for every testing session, which is great. Okay, I think I have enough time here to go over the overall scores. So let's do that too. The first thing that I want to do is I want to bring up something called the total score of athleticism, which I believe it was termed by Anthony Turner and his colleagues uh, at a Middlesex University in the UK. All, all that is, is it's just an average of all of an athlete's z-scores. And, you know, we calculated z-scores. They're not the same thing as what we're doing here, but it's an average of a bunch of scores for tests, and it gives them like kind of like a total overall score or a representation of their overall athleticism. I want to bring that up because there are different ways to calculate an overall score, and it's important to consider how you're doing that. The first way that we're going to do it is that way, or in a total score of athleticism way, where we take the average of all of the tests that we chose for our scores, or all the tests that we want to go into an overall score. So let's do that. We'll go equals average, open parenthesis, and I'm just going to select all the, all the metrics that we picked already. So there's CMJ average score, comma, broad jump score, comma, 10 meter sprint score, comma, 20 meter sprint score, comma, body fat score, comma, uh, VO2 max score, which I'll get to now, VO2 max score, comma, and trap bar deadlift relative strength, comma, trap bar deadlift 1RM, comma, bench 1RM, comma, and bench relative strength. Those are all of our scores, right? We got two in the power, we got two in the speed, two in the fitness, or two in the fitness, and then four in the strength. Whoops. And we can close the parenthesis and click enter. And there we go. That's the person's overall score. Now there's another way to do this. And this is an important consideration. The way that we just did it, each score is weighted evenly. Because we're taking an average of however many of these we have. The other way that you can do it is we can go equals average, open parenthesis, and average the category scores. Close the parenthesis and click enter. Now these two numbers are different. And this is really important. Here, let's, here, I'll, I'll copy this, paste it down, see if we see any bigger differences. Nothing too drastic. This one's pretty drastic. A 61 to a 53, that's pretty drastic. Um, the, the reason why these are different is because in the first one, we take the average of each metric and weight them evenly. In the second one, we take the average of all the categories. So we weight each of the categories evenly. So what we're doing is we're evenly weighting four numbers versus evenly weighting uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers. The reason why this is different is because we can have different numbers of metrics going into each of these category scores. Right? We have four metrics going into this strength score. So what we're doing is we're essentially giving less weight, if we do it by the categories, we're giving less weight to each of these strength metrics because it's four pulled all into one score. Whereas there are only two metrics pulled into these other scores. So what we'll see here is that people with high strength values have lower low overall score in this CATS column compared with their overall score that they have when we weight each strength metric independently of the category, if that makes sense. So someone that has a low strength value, like this, will have a higher category score than an, um, an overall score. Someone with a high strength value, like this person, will have a higher independently weighted overall score than a category score. And where's that person with a drastic difference? This one. So this person had, oops, this person had a really low, this person has a really low strength score. So when we weight the strength score itself 
their overall score isn't too bad. But when we rate uh, weight each metric independently that goes into the strength score, their overall score is a little bit lower because we're giving more weight to strength metrics overall compared to the other metrics because there are only two in the other categories. I know I kind of went on about that. I repeat myself a couple times. I just want to make sure that it makes sense. And so these are two different ways of calculating the scores. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to do it based on this uh, overall category score, or maybe we'll just keep them both, um, just because uh, it won't take up that much real estate. And we'll go if error. So if there's an error with anything going on in this average, we'll go comma, quote, quote, close the parenthesis. And for the next one, we'll do the same thing. If error, if there's an error uh, with this average of the category scores, we'll go comma, quote, quote, so we'll make it blank, close the parenthesis, and let's make these scores have no decimals. Uh, an important consideration is that with this overall score where we take each of these metrics individually, if we decide to add another metric and want to include it in this score and our category scores, we're just going to have to add it in two places. right? So let's say that we all of a sudden start collecting 30 meter sprint time. Well, then we're going to have to add the 30 meter sprint into this speed score calculation and add it into this overall score calculation. Whereas if we're using this overall score from categories, we only have to add the 30 meter sprint into the speed score calculation and this category score calculation will take care of itself. And on the, on the flip side, um, if we add another category, uh, then we'd have to add that to this category score equation. Uh, whereas we didn't, ne we don't necessarily have to add. We might want to add the metrics that go into that category into this overall score, but we don't necessarily have to do anything with this overall score uh, if we're not considering the category scores. Sorry, that was so long-winded. Let's copy these values, go to the bottom of our sheet, paste them, so that everyone gets an overall score or two different overall scores, I guess. And great. That's all I got. Hopefully this scoring system series has been helpful. Uh, if this video has been helpful, please make sure to give it a like. And if the content in general has been helpful for you, achieving any of your goals, please subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited that you went through this scoring stuff because I think it's really valuable from a sports science pers perspective and just understanding math and data and different ways to do things. I think that's a really good set of tools to have in your toolkit. Now we're ready to move on to module four and use these scores in our dashboards. And I'm really excited for that. So I will see you in the next video.